Okay, my name is Siobhan McCafferty and I'm the Research Data Coordinator for NANORP, which is the Natural, National Agricultural Nitrous Oxide Research Program. Uh, NANORP is the most recent iteration of a national nitrous oxide and gas emissions research program, hence the name, and this program brings together researchers from at least 10 Australian universities and six institutions and government. NANORP's coordinated from QUT in Brisbane and I'm part of a small team of two embedded in the Healthy Ecosystems and Environmental Monitoring Group, which is part of the Institute for Future Environments. My job covers all things data management, but the focus of it now is a service manager for the InterWay Data Repository and Portal. For those who like technical information, the portal is our own version of a Metacat uh, repository, which is Java and Tomcat, developed by the Knowledge Network for Biocomplexity, using the software's web server, a Postgres relational database management system, and an LDAP. Other features that were spliced on are a GeoServer software for mapping and a web interface which allows users to access and interact with the records. We also have an OAI PMH metadata harvest to Research Data Australia and the system has an integrated DOI minting facility, uh, minting providing by ANS using a nice little piece of software called website, website contents managed using Joomla CMS, uh, PHP and MySQL as a database um, and I do all of the the content for the website. I also advise on data and metadata standards, licensing and access, and encourage researchers to provide us with their data and metadata, either by self-upload or via Morpho upload software. Integrated DOI minting facility um, and a minting services provided by ANS with a, a nifty little piece of software that we developed called DOI Monkey. Uh, website contents managed with Joomla, with PHP and MySQL as a database. So there's a whole lot of stuff going and going on in the background that's taken care of by our wonderful developer, Moises. I also advise on data and metadata standards, licensing and access, and I encourage researchers to provide us with their data and metadata either by self-upload via Morpho or with my help. I spend a fair amount of time talking to researchers about what they need, how to get their data where it's meant to be, and how to make it useful for other people. How did I get where I am now? Uh, like many librarians, this is not my first career. My academic background was in philosophy and religious studies, uh, and I began my studies in Wellington, New Zealand, at Victoria, and I continued at Stirling and over at the University of Glasgow. Um, I've got lots of years teaching at universities and working in libraries to support myself while I, I tried to develop an academic career. So consequently, I had a, a nice collection of soft skills and technical experience. So when the GFC hit Europe and jobs in the humanities became scarce, I moved countries and I began training to be an archivist, which eventually became a study for Masters in Information Management at ECU and led to my current incarnation. While I was nearing the end of my studies, I took on a short-term contract with a new e-research team based at the Institute for Sustainable Resources at QUT. That team was externally funded by project work and our bread and butter was repositories and data portals for scientific research and developing scientific software and applications. I was also involved then in a few ANS projects and also with the TURN uh, data portal which Michelle um, was working on, so got to know a few people. In 2012, ISR disbanded and became the Institute for Future Environments at QUT and I was absorbed into the heme, so absorbed back into the bloodstream <laughs> of the, the Institute um, and for the remaining duration of the NANORP program, um, I was their data librarian or research data coordinator. The main challenges of my work will be familiar to everyone. The first one is working in emergent sector. Data librarians and information specialists don't fit in traditional boxes. And it's often difficult for employers and funders to see why and where you fit. And that can make writing proposal costings difficult. So when projects come up that will need my work, it's often been difficult to say why they need my work. I was very lucky to work in a a project, an overarching project um, that was willing to take on you know, new technologies and, and try and develop them. Um, but sometimes your funders don't really understand that, which brings us to funding. NANOP researchers work with gas emissions and climate change, and they're not very favoured areas of funding at the moment, unfortunately. Uh, there's also been a lot of cuts to long-term research funding, which has put a serious squeeze on research and made it necessary for us to curtail some schemes and change the scope of others. It's also meant I've needed to expand my role to kind of fill the gaps where other members of staff may have been. Um, 
which I think has been quite positive actually. Most of our projects are short term and run on a skeleton staff now and funding will also unfortunately endanger the future of my portal. Um, so it's possible that we're going to lose this internationally important collection. To counter this, we've changed some of our practices and descriptions of our aims. For example, instead of our research looking at farming practices and man-made gas emissions, we talk about increasing yields for lowered fertilizer usage. Um, we try and make what we're doing very focused towards um, farmer needs, agricultural needs, and working with industry to provide solutions rather than a purely academic kind of climate modeling focus. The other challenge has been culture change. Um, soil science is a very traditional area, or has been, and being part of an emergent sector working in an interdisciplinary way with a traditional area has been very challenging, but also a lot of fun. So research in general, as well as uh, traditionally being an area where sitting on your data and keeping it secure and secret was necessary. And the way to get ahead in your academic career was to have exclusive data to write about. And the more exclusive and more secret the data, the better. Working to spread the idea that sharing data was the way forward. And even more so, open data was the way forward has been very difficult. So I've um, employed carrot and stick methods. So we have a a really useful big stick, which is our researchers get funding for supplying us with their data. It's built into their contracts, so no data, no funding. But I don't want to use the stick all the time. I prefer the carrot, um, and I want to really make researchers aware of the benefits of making their data open, and that putting it into a repository such as ours, um, putting DOI on things, linking things up, is going to be beneficial, particularly to early career researchers, because they're the guys that are going to drive this. So making open data and data sharing work for my researchers has been key. We've got really tight licensing and attribution controls so they can see their data is protected and we make sure to broadcast any good use of our, our data. Um, someone uses it in an article, I make sure everyone in the network knows about it. Something gets published, everyone knows about it. Yeah, we make sure to broadcast all the good press and make researchers aware that they can use other open data as well to augment their own, so kind of spread the good news. How do I manage without the supporting confines of a library? Um, I was really lucky when I picked up that first contract. I had a, a great mentor and friend as my manager, and he helped walk me through a lot of things um, that I needed to know. It was a massive learning curve, and it was really daunting uh, to walk into fresh from study as well and changing sectors. But I was invited to every meeting going, every workshop, and every product presentation uh, whether I really needed to be there or not for a while. So I was made aware of the complexity of data and metadata management and encouraged to read and explore current issues in the area. And slowly I built a very practical picture of data librarianship um, as it applied to me. Maybe not as broad as other people, um, but certainly I learned what I needed to know. I also had a team that was willing, when it had the funding, <laughs> to take the risk on an emergent area and send me to get training as the need arose and made sure I could attend workshops. If I asked to go to something, 99% of the time, yes, no problem, how can we help, um, which was wonderful. I also have an excellent relationship with the library. I'm sitting in it right now, I actually work here two days a week at the moment, and I've worked with them as much as possible towards common goals, and they've really included me and others like me in the university um, in their planning. Uh, we consult on relevant aspects of both our domains, we go to a lot of the same meetings. I've also got a, a strong project team. We've in the past been larger, but now there's two of us, um, and my developer is a great guy, really knowledgeable, willing to sit down and explain things to me. He has endless patience. Um, and likewise, anything that he needed to know, I sat down, talked to him through it as well. Uh, the last thing would be, because I'm part of the university, I am subject to staff development. So even though I'm not, I'm not really within the university data librarian group when I'm working for IFE, but I can still get access to the same training. For example, project management training. I was able to attend that. And last on the screen there is willingness to ask for help. I was really lucky during some of our projects that everyone was in the same boat. We were developing things from scratch. We were making new exciting products. Um, and I could ask, what are you doing? How are you doing it? I'd ask guys at Anne's QT, the guy in the coffee shop. I asked everyone their opinions. Uh, how do I develop my skills? I think I kind of covered that there. I, I just went to everything going. I've maybe got a real eclectic collection of qualifications and skills because of that. But yeah, every time I needed to upskill, I had the opportunity.
or I could seek out the opportunity and was supported. So what advice would I give to others who are thinking of moving into a role such as yours? Um, first of all, I've said this before, be an advocate for your users, front end and back end. They're the people that create and consume the data and the metadata, they're our ultimate audience. And if the product, product doesn't suit them, then it won't get used. No matter how pretty it is or how much work you've put in, nobody will want it. So ask your researchers what they need and be prepared to negotiate and make concessions from your ideals about data management to make sure that they get that. Be flexible. Having an open and flexible attitude invites open and flexible dialogue. If a researcher is having problems with the software, and everyone does, it's not the easiest thing to use, then I'll try and find the best way to help them. Some people like emails, some people like online help, some people like to be visited. Um, if they have firewall problems, I will upload their data sets, even though I encourage them very strongly to do it themselves. Uh, if they break the internet, I will fly to help them, even if they're in Western Australia, I will be there. Keep high standards. Um, because data repositories are evolving and it's an emergent area, it's easy for people who are newly in contact with data librarianship to say, oh, that'll do. You know, it looks good, fine. Um, but in keeping to agreed best practice and industry standard and being seen to do so, you convey the importance of data management and storage. And you find that people will rise to your standards as well, especially when you can couple that with a willingness to be flexible in your approach and to help your contributors. You'll hopefully end up with an excellent product for the end. For example, I have researchers who are very, very busy. I say, I know you're busy, but we really need all those metadata fields. Here's a pre-filled in Word document with what I already have. You just need to have technical details, get it back to me, get it up. That way everyone reaches their deadlines, you know, milestones are, are met and everyone's happy. And that's me. Thank you very much, everyone. Any questions? How do we attract people to data oh. librarianship when it's largely unknown, misunderstood field? Go and go and talk at them about it and how wonderful it is. <laughs> um, attract people to come and be data librarians. Really go, for, for me, go to different um, academic streams, go to different disciplines and talk to people about how they can apply what they know. Because a, a lot of the time, you know, we develop these collection of skills and there's not all the jobs there in academia or in industry. And people who know a little bit about an area can learn a lot about another thing, put them together and suddenly they're great data librarians. But how to make it attractive? I don't know, maybe, yeah, we just talk to them a lot more. Be more present. Don't hide in cupboards like I'm doing at the moment. Um, we've got another one that comes in. It says, are there traditional librarian skills that give a pathway into data librarianship? Sure, cataloguing. I learned a whole lot when I was doing my paper on cataloguing that I directly apply all the time. But I'm maybe not the best person to ask because I'm not a very traditional librarian. <laughs> um, and I, I purposefully negotiated my way through my qualifications so I didn't need to do very traditional librarian things. I think all of the skills that we develop in traditional librarianship are applicable, Excellent. especially the people skills, interview techniques, all of them. You mentioned you attended as many conferences, etc., to learn. How did you convince management to fund this as I quite to attend anything as there is no not money? Yeah, um, when, the, when we had funding early in the projects, that was a lot easier, I will admit that. But I also do fund myself in some situations. So we'll, they'll partially fund me or I will pay for something and agree that I can have the time during work to go to it. So some of it is negotiation time um, because of funding issues. Fantastic. Thank you, Siobhan.